and I worship you. Yes, let us praise the Lord God. Let us praise Him because He has been good for us. Let us praise Him for all the good things He has done for us. Oh, Father, we praise you. We praise you and we worship you, Lord. For you have been good, Lord. You have been good in the name of Jesus. You have been good, Lord, month one. You have been good for us, Lord. You have been keeping us. You have been supporting us. You have been with us, O oh Lord, mighty one. That's why we bless you. That's why we celebrate you, Lord. Who is there like you? Is there another one like you, God? Is there another one like you, Jehovah? Is there another one like you, O oh Lord, mighty one? Is there another one like you? Nobody is like the Lord our God. Nobody is like the Lord our God. Nobody. Nobody. There is nobody else like Jehovah our King. There is nobody else like Jehovah our Savior. There is nobody else like Jehovah our Redeemer. Nobody else is like him. Yes, beloved, my brother and my sister. Take up. This moment that we have, the moment of grace, the moment of heaven, that we have in the presence of God, and worship Him again, worship Him again, exhort Him. We are praising Him. Praise and worship is a way and model for us to enter into His presence, the presence of the King, the presence of the glorious Savior. So take this moment and worship Him again. Take this moment and exhort Him again. Take this moment and say to Him, My God. I praise you and I lift you up. I praise you and I exalt your name. I praise you. I lift your name high and up, Lord. I praise you, my King. I praise you, my King. For there is nobody like you. I praise you, my Savior. I praise you, my Savior. Because nobody is like you. I praise you, my Redeemer. I praise you, my Redeemer. For nobody is like you. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. For there is nobody like you. I praise you, my God. I praise you, my Savior. Because nobody is like you. You are my King. You are my Savior. You are my King. You are my Redeemer. That's why I praise your holy name, Jehovah. That's why I praise your holy name, Jehovah, my Savior. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord, because nobody else is like you. Nobody is like else is comparable to you. Yes, beloved, I want you at this moment to praise the Lord again. Praise him again because you have the grace to be in the presence of the King. Praise him for you have the grace to be in his presence. Praise him. For he let you enter into his house. The Lord God, he let you enter in his house, into his temple, into his holy of holies. So that's why I want you to praise him again. Say to him, oh, thank you, Lord. Because you have opened the way for me. Say to him, thank you, Lord. Because you have opened the way for me. I can enter today in your tabernacle. I can enter, I can enter in your place of glory. Say to the Lord, my God, I exalt you because you give me the grace to enter in the holy place. Say to him, Lord, I praise you because you give me the grace to enter in your holy place. Say to him, O oh Lord, I worship you because you give me the grace to come in the holy place. Say, Lord, I praise you. I can't come into your tabernacle because of the mercy. Yes, beloved. It is because of what Jesus did for us at the cross. That is why we can enter even this evening. That we can enter even this evening and come into the presence of the king. Because of word. He did for us on the cross. That is why we can even come near. We can come near. Even come near God. We can come near God. We can come near. Enter in the presence of the king. That's why you will say thank you for the cross. Jesus, thank you for the cross. Jesus, thank you for the cross. Jesus, thank you for the cross. Oh, I worship you, Lord. 
I exalt you, my God. I say thank you for the cross. I say many, many thanks, many thanks, many thanks to you. I am grateful for thee, for thee, cross, my God. I am forever grateful for the cross. Because of the cross, Jesus died on the cross. We have the blood because of the cross. We have forgiveness because of the cross. Because of the cross now, the veil that was in the front of the temple has been teared down. Now we can see the glory of God. It is because of the cross. That we can see the glory of God. Say thank you for the blood. Open your mouth where you are. Start to say thank you to the Lord for the blood. I say to you thank you my God for the blood. The blood of the covenant. The blood that washed away my sins. The blood that set me free. The blood that heals me, the blood that make me sing. That's why I'm saying thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my God. Yes, I say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Yes, my Savior. I say thank you for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. My God, I say thank you for the blood. I say thank you, Lord, for the blood that you shed for me on Calvary. I say thank you, Jesus, for the blood you shed for me on Calvary. Oh, I'm saying thank you, thank you, Lord, because you died for me on the cross. That is why I can sing. I can say my God is good. Yes, because he loved me and he died for me on the cross. Yes, my sin have been forgiven. My fault have been washed away. Say to him, thank you, Lord, because you have washed away my sin. Thank you, Lord, because you have washed away my sin. Say to him, thank you, thank you, thank you. My Lord and my King, we say thank you. My Lord and my King, we say thank you. Yes, beloved, where as we come together in a meeting like this, we come together in the meeting with the Holy Spirit. We come to meet uh, with uh, the Spirit of God. Yes, the Lord our God. The Lord our God is a spirit. So that's why this moment, uh, I want you to pray with me. At this moment, uh, I want you to declare that Holy Spirit, uh, I desire your presence in my life. Holy Spirit, I want your presence in my life. Holy Spirit, I want your presence in everything I am doing. Holy Spirit, I want your presence with me. I desire your presence, Lord. I desire you, Jesus. I want your presence, Lord. I want your presence, Lord. I want your presence, Lord. Yes, um, I desire, I desire your presence, my Lord and my King. I want your presence, my Lord and my King. Yes, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I desire to be in your presence. I desire to be in your presence. I want to be in your presence, Lord. I want to be in your presence, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. I want to be in your presence, Lord. Oh, Lord. I want to be in your presence. I desire. I desire. In the name of Jesus. I desire your presence in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, I greet you all again this um, evening. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. We are having a, a prayer meeting. Uh, and then uh, we are going to share the word of God 
and then uh, we will pray. We will pray this uh, Saturday. We are going to pray uh, in the presence of God. And I believe as we are praying, the Lord will hear us. And as he hears our prayer, he will answer us. Uh, yes, the anointing is burning in me. And uh, let us read together in the book uh, of... Uh, we are seeing the book of uh, Luke, Luke 13. We will read from 10 to 17. Luke 13, 10 to 17. And this is a, a story that I want us to have a look again this evening so that we can pray with the scripture, so that we can pray with the word. When you pray with the scripture, when you pray with the word, your prayer become very easy. Your prayer cannot be stopped because you are praying according to the truth. And the truth is the word of God. The word of God is the truth. Yes, uh, this is what uh, I will read. Uh, I've sent the scripture in the chat and I will read that uh, together so that we can see together. Uh, Luke 13, 10 to 17. Now, he was teaching in one of the synagogues. Jesus was teaching on the Sabbath. And be, behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years, and was bent over and could could in no way in no way raise herself up but when jesus saw her he called her to him and said to her woman you are loose from your infirmity and he, he laid his hand on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified god but the ruler of the synagogues Answer with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crown, There are six days on which men are to work. Therefore, come and be ill on them, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, He that does not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox and donkey from the store and lead it to water it? So out not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bowed, think of it, for 18 years be loosed for this, from this bound on the Sabbath. And when he said those things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. We receive this powerful word that you give us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For the powerful word you give us in the name of Jesus, we pray. Yes, beloved, I wanted us to read this scripture again so that together we can go through what the Lord asked for us this evening. And I want us to have a look and see that Jesus Christ went to the synagogue. And somewhere in the Bible, they tell us that this was his custom. Jesus had this uh, habitude of going to the synagogue because the synagogue was the place of worship, was the place where the people used to meet for them to share the word of God, for them uh, to receive what God has for them. That's why Jesus went to the place of meeting. Now, you will see that when Jesus went to this place of meeting, Jesus saw that the woman had a spirit of infirmity. There was a spirit that was disturbing this young woman. But as Jesus said that, yes, you woman, be loose from the spirit, be healed, then the ruler of the synagogue they were upset 
with the people, saying to them that you are today is Sabbath. Why did you come to for Sabbath to be healed? Why did you come in the day of Sabbath to be ill? You have to come on the rest of the days for you to come and be ill. And for that, let me say that the scripture is telling us that this woman has been sick for 18 years. So how many days did she do coming to the synagogue for those 18 years and she was no healed? She came, she used to come to the synagogue for those 18 years and in no day they said to her that she was healed. But on this day, when she come, then the people are telling her, you will see, uh, let me read it again. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I think, 14. I read 14 again. They say, but the ruler of the synagogue answer with indignation. So he had indignation because a miracle happened. He had indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crown, there are six days on which men are to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them, and not on the Sabbath day. So by this, you will see what was in the heart of the people. Even in the heart of this woman, she came to be healed. That's why he's telling them, come on the other days to be healed. But this woman, I believe, and there is a reason, I think I will enter in the reason why I'm saying this. I believe she came in all the other six days. So she came because a synagogue, synagogue in the in the time of Jesus, even up to now, in a, a Jewish community, a synagogue is a place where people can come every day of the week. You enter, you spend your time with God, and then you go to your house. And in every synagogue, there are uh, rabbi, rabbi, rabbi who are there. When you come, then they teach you. When you are, you are saying, okay, today I have enough, you go to your house. And then the, the rabbi also, they keep on changing. There are a group of rabbi, they are there only. You come in, they teach you. When you, are, you have enough, you go. And that's how it used to be. Now, and as uh, it, uh, it happened so, as it happened so, you will see that this woman... You will see that this woman, she came all the all those days, but she didn't see a miracle. But on this day, she had the miracle. And I want to precise something also, that Jesus is calling her this daughter of Abraham. When Jesus called her the daughter of Abraham, it means that she was a daughter of Abraham. And she remained a daughter of Abraham through faith. There are some people who are from Abraham, but they don't have faith. But it is those who rest who remain in faith are called the daughter of Abraham. And from the precision that Jesus is giving to her, that yes, I heal this one because she was a daughter of Abraham. There are another place where Jesus Christ is talking to people. That we can call them children of Abraham. But this is in John 6, 7, 8. But Jesus is telling them, you are trying to kill me. You people, you are son of, uh, you are you are not son of Abraham. You, because you are trying to kill me. When Abraham saw me, he didn't want to kill me. But you are trying to kill me. And this is showing a little bit of difference. Why? But this woman, she was in the synagogue, she wants to be healed. Now, when we, we go to the place, uh, uh, one of the places that will help us for the prayer this evening, uh, 16, Jesus replied, 16, he said that, So, out not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years, be loosed from this bound on the Sabbath. 
Are you following me, beloved? See, if you come that if you came that day in the synagogue with your human eyes, you look at the woman, you would just say that yes, this, yes, that. But when Jesus looked at her, Jesus saw that she, there was a bandage on her. Jesus looked at the daughter of Abraham. He saw the bandage. Jesus could see how the devil, how Satan put the bandage on this young woman. Jesus could see it. But other people, especially the ruler of the synagogue, especially the ruler of the synagogue, had no idea that this woman, if she was in that position, it's because of the devil. He, did, he didn't have any idea. If he had the idea, he could not be irritated with the people because they came to be healed. If he had the idea, he could have done it himself because he is the ruler of the synagogue. He could have done it himself during those 18 years. One of the day he could have done, he could have come to the woman and speak to the woman. Woman, I see that you are being bound by the enemy. Because you are a daughter of um, Abraham, I will pray for you. See, there is something here. You don't become a ruler of synagogue by chance. No. You don't just become a, a professor. Because being a ruler of uh, a synagogue, it's like you are a ruler of professor at university. Like a, I can call it a dean. You don't just, first, you don't just become a university professor by chance. You don't just wake up. Not even a university uh, professor. You don't become a teacher at a primary, at a pre primary school by chance. You don't just wake up in the morning and say, okay, I feel like becoming a primary teacher. And then you go to a school, you say, hello everyone, from today I'm a teacher in the school. No, it doesn't happen like that. And what about becoming a, uh, a teacher for a, in a secondary school? No. What about a university? You need that to show your credential. You need that to show that you have learned the things that you are bringing. You need to show it. For you to be a professor at a university, you need to show that you know your stuff. Whatever subject you will come to teach, you need to know the stuff. Even if you are just a, a, teach, a teacher for a primary school, you need, to do, you need to know your stuff. You need to know your stuff. Even simple, you need to know how to just manage your classroom. So, it's the same thing. A synagogue is a place to go and learn. And for the Jew, it was a, a... Because not everybody could go to the big temple in Jerusalem. That's why they made the synagogue a representation of temple in every city, in every place where the Jew used to meet. There was those places. And in the, the synagogue, they had, they had rabbi. Rabbi who, who were learned. All those scribes that we see in the Bible talking to Jesus. Yes, though during that period, they were talking to Jesus. They didn't have that revelation. But they spent time learning. Though those things, they were learning bad things. Even a teacher at the university, they spent time learning. Though some of the stuff, they are not the real stuff. But you need still to come and show people that you have learned enough to be able to teach uh, evolution. That man, there was a big bang. For you to be a scientist and teach a university, though you are teaching crazy stuff, you need to know your crazy stuff. It's the same with the rabbi. And it is the same with uh, this one we are seeing today. We, they call him uh, the ruler of the synagogue. He was like the, direct, the, direct, the director. Director. Oh, I don't know how to say that. Director. Yes, that director. He was the director of the synagogue. 
ruler, it means somebody who's ruling, controlling, managing, making everything to run. So, one day, if you remember the story with Jesus and Nicodemus, Jesus and Nicodemus, when they, they had the discussion in uh, John 3, and Nicodemus said something, Jesus was like, what? Wait a minute. You are a teacher. You are a doctor in Israel. And you don't know this? See, that, that, that is a valid question. Because the guy was a doctor. All those people, when, even when you read in the book, those people talking to Jesus, there were no kids. There were no kids. The people who came to Jesus with the question, uh, Master, do we pay taxes to Caesar? Or those who ask him, Oh, Master, uh, what is that question? Uh, master, yes, does, uh, there was, you remember the story where, where there were seven brothers with one sister, uh, with one sister, and then they could not have a baby. Those people who came to ask that question, it was not kids. They were learned people. They knew the scripture. They knew, they knew all those stuff. They were in position of leadership. They were the leaders of the people. But the leader of the people, yes, this is important. The leader, that's why if they say, if the story, it is in the Bible, it is important for us to receive some revelation from it. That the ruler could not see that this woman, who is a daughter of Abraham, was bound by a demon. And it was the devil who was doing the thing in a life and by that bringing it to for us today we also we have to know when there are some bandages bandages where there are some we when somebody is bound the person is limited when there are some bandages when there are some limitation it is provoked by the devil there uh, look at the party and uh, when we start from the beginning on the top, yeah, I think uh, da, 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 11. And this is what the scripture is saying to us on 11. They say that, and behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity. She had a spirit of infirmity because she had that spirit. She became bound. The spirit came on her and the spirit did something on her. She was bound because of the spirit. So there are spirits that come with job. That spirit name was infirmity. And that spirit with the name of infirmity. Following up the story, I can say that when a spirit of infirmity come upon a person, the person become infirm. The person become bound. When a spirit of limitation come upon a person, the person become limited. When a spirit of craziness come upon a person, the person become crazy. That thing is provoked by the spirit. Yes, many times, many times, then we can come up with something like, oh, bro, this cannot, this doesn't apply to me because I have gave my life to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lot of those stuff, they don't apply to children of God. Lot of those stuff, they don't apply to those who have gave their life to Jesus. It is true. But then they become something that we know. That we call it is a abuse. There is something called intimidation. You can be a Christian, but you are intimidated. Yes, see, the thing is not in you, but the thing is around you. And the thing can intimidate you. And you are intimidated. Look, uh, for example, what is happening between Russia and Ukraine? What did, uh, uh, I was going to call the guy the devil. What uh, the president of Russia is doing, it is purely calling, we call it intimidation and we call it bully. 
he is just bullying because he has a big country. He is going to bully a small country. And because now, when you look at it in the spiritual realm, now we are in the spiritual realm. And when you look in the spiritual realm, you will see that they are evil spirits intimidating people. Evil, yes, there, there was this story. Two stories. I would say two stories. Wow, the time is flying. We are going to pray. Two story. First story, there was those young women in the choir. They were singing. You know choir Sing, singer singing. They were singing the song, The devil is under our feet. Ah, ah, ah. The devil is under our feet. Ah, ah, ah. They were singing the song. And as they were singing the song, they finished to sing the song. They went to sit where the choir sing normally. And as they went to sing, where they went to sit, and there was a mouse. The mouse just passed by the woman. And you will see, it was in church, how the old choir will, the, of the sister, they left the statue. Hey, mouse, mouse. They ran because of a mouse. But during the song, they were singing how the devil is underneath the feet, how the, the snake, the, the devil is the, the serpent, the snake, they can walk up on the snake, uh, we can stamp on the snake, they can sing it. But when a small mouse came, though the, those young women were Christian, they just shake, they just shake, they just shake. And there is another video. It is on YouTube. And it was during church service as well. The pastor said, "Today, uh, I'm gonna. Uh, we are going to. Uh, we are going to start a new program, a new theme. Uh, theme. We are going to preach. Uh, the subject was don't fear. He was going to teach no, don't fear. You Christian, don't fear. A Christian should not fear. Yes, a Christian should not fear. So when he was teaching, is when he started. When as soon as he started, he stopped. He look, and he look." on his note he look again he look on his note he look the people he look on his note and then he run away the pastor run and the whole church start to run as well the whole church and everybody was panicked and they wanted to run out and the pastor came back say hey, it was a prank it was a prank it was a prank and they say see this is what i'm going to teach you you should not fear so those two stories are still that happened in the church when I mean the church, where it happened, where they were Christian. Know that uh, the spirit of fear can dominate a Christian, but the spirit of fear doesn't even need to be inside. It's just outside and bullying you from outside. And as it bully you that way, you may fear. You may fear and you start to shake. And the spirit know that the spirit cannot enter in you and uh, dominate you again because you have accepted as Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. But the spirit can cause so much trouble in your life by it being outside. That is why we are going to pray. And we are going to pray. We are going to pray. We have a 25 minutes of prayer. We are going to pray attacking because we are still in the period where you are, we are praying by fire. By fire and by power. We are using the power and the fire we have to attack today seven big spirits. We are going to fight them. You are praying for yourself. You are praying for your family. You are praying for this group. You are praying over seven, seven spirits. We are going to go through the list and we are going to attack them because they are spirit, included the spirit of fear that destroy people. That is why you're going to pray in the name of Jesus that the fire of God will destroy every spirit that come around you to abuse you, to, to bully you, to bully your family, to bully your house, to bully even this group, to bully even our church, every spirit in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and start to pray with me. Wherever you are, open your mouth and start to pray. Say to the Lord God, my God, my God, my God, I am a son of Abraham. Me too. Me too. I am a son of Abraham. You are a daughter of Abraham. 
put your name there. Say to the Lord God, yes, you are a daughter of Abraham. You are a son of Abraham. You too. Therefore, you have right for the deliverance of God by fire. God asks to deliver your life by fire. Open your mouth and pray with me. Open your mouth and pray with me in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray with me in the name of Jesus. Yesu Maranda Hoprenda Shikarabada. Say to the Lord God. Say to the Lord God in the name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father God, my Father God, me too, I am a son of Abraham. Therefore, the devil cannot bind me by any spirit using, no, 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 whatsoever the spirit might be. The devil has no right to bound me with any spirit. The devil has no right to abuse my life using any spirit. The devil has no right to bring heaviness in my life using any spirit. Using any spirit. He has no right in the name of Jesus. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. De declare it upon your life. Declare it uh, upon your family. Declare it uh, this evening uh, upon the church. Uh, say no in the name of Jesus. Uh, the devil has no right uh, to bound any of us. In the name uh, of Jesus. Uh, the enemy has no right um, to bound um, any one of us. As in the name of Jesus, we oppose the work of the devil. We oppose the work of the devil in the name, in the name of Jesus. We oppose the work of the devil by fire, by fire, by fire. We oppose the work of the devil by fire. You are saying, You devil, you cannot abuse my life. You devil, you cannot be in my life saying a bad thing about me. Say to him, you devil, you cannot be saying bad thing about my family. You cannot abuse my family. You cannot bully anyone in my family. You cannot bully anyone in this group. You cannot bully my church. You cannot bully my church. You cannot bully my brothers. You cannot bully my sisters. You cannot bully my wife. You cannot pray. You, you, you have a husband. Pray for your husband. Say to the devil, you devil, you cannot bully my husband. Pray for your children. You speak, you say, devil, you cannot bully my children. You pray for your parent. You children, you can pray for your parent. And the power of God will manifest in the life of your parent. You say, you devil, you cannot bully my parent in the name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty, mighty, mighty. Name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty mighty name of Jesus Alabonde Shekarabonde in the mighty name of Jesus O Brenda Abrende Hepeta O Brenda say in the name of Jesus say you devil you devil you have no right to abuse my family you cannot put your bounds your chain on my family no, not on my life. No, no, no. You are telling him, devil, you cannot put your chain on my life. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. In the name of Jesus. Say to him, devil, you cannot put your chain on my life. You cannot put your chain of bandage on my family. I say, no, 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 devil. I oppose you by fire. Say to him, devil, I oppose you by fire. I oppose you by fire. I oppose you by fire. In the name of Jesus. I oppose you by fire. I oppose you by fire. In the name of Jesus. Say to him, devil, devil, devil. I oppose you by fire. I oppose you by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say to him, devil. I oppose you by fire. I oppose, yes, by the fire of God. 
by the fire of God, by the fire of God, by the fire of God, I oppose you by fire. I oppose you by fire. In the name of Jesus, say to him, devil, I say, no, I oppose you by fire. I oppose you by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, today in the scripture, we, we saw one, one spirit. It is a, the spirit of infirmity. Yes, that's the spirit of infirmity. And I believe as during the word, as the word came with fire, with the anointing, some stuff was running away. But those are the seven spirits we are going to attack. We are starting with accusation. There is a spirit in the same line of uh, infirmi uh, infirmity that we saw. But there, is a, there are seven more wicked spirits than those one. This is the list, I believe, of the seven evil spirits that the enemy use. There is a demo called a demo of accusation. That demo, it just come in your life and start to accuse you. It accuses you. That's the spirit. You see a person go to work and they sack the person from work. And the person has done nothing. But still they sack him. And that's what the person say. What happened? No. Because there is a spirit of accusation that has gone to accuse you at work. That has gone to accuse you. Yeah. That spirit is not in you. Yeah. That's what some people, you know, some people, they have this teaching where they say, no, I am Christian. A demon cannot enter in me. Yes. That's true. But the demon from outside can do you stuff if you don't resist it. That's the demon. The demon of accusation. It is even the demon that stand that go to accuse you even before God. Because remember the scripture said, the accuser of our brothers. The accuser of our brothers. The enemy go to accuse you before God even for the things you didn't do. The enemy is a liar. He is able to accuse you even about the things you didn't do. So that's why you're going to speak. Open your mouth and start to pray. I believe you are praying with me where you are. Open your mouth. Say, you demon of accusation against my life. I command you to catch fire. Command it to catch fire. All the accusation of Satan against you, they have to catch fire. The accusation of Satan against you in your family. Yes, the members of your family, they have something against you. After one finish, another one come. After one finish, another one will come. No, no, no. It is an accuser. He is, there is an accuser of our brother. Did they say to you that he is the accuser of the thief? Did they say to you that he is the accuser of uh, the enemy? No, no. He is the accuser of our brothers, our believing brothers. But he accused them. That's why you are praying for your life. You are praying. You say, no, no. You accuser of my life. Start to burn in the name of Jesus. You evil mouth. Wherever you are, accusing me, accusing my family, accusing my brothers, accusing my sisters, accusing my parents, accusing a group, accusing a church. You, I command you to catch fire. Catch fire and burn in the name of Jesus. Catch fire and burn in the name of Jesus. Catch fire and burn in the name of Jesus. Fire, 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 fire in the mountain. In the mighty name of Jesus, catch fire and burn. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, what produce? What does accusation produce? When somebody accuses you, even when you go to the court, there is an accuser. When the accusation reach in the ear of the judge, there is what we call condemnation. Yes, there is a condemnation. There is a demon. The job, its job is just to condemn people. The spirit, even the spirit of accusation can accuse you to yourself. You are sleeping, a voice is telling you stuff. Oh, you have not done well, you have not done well. And after the accusation has run its court, then uh, condemnation happen. Condemnation happen. That is why there is a demon also of condemnation. The same way we saw the demon of infirmity. The demon of infirmity came upon the person, the person was infirm. When the demon of condemnation came open person, the person became condemned. Even if you didn't do it, they still condemn you. Even if you didn't do it, 
That is the accusation of a brother job. They accuse a brother and the, the enemy go to accuse the brother between the brother. This one accuse this one and condemn the person in the heart. And this one accuse this one and condemn. So this one is accused, this one is condemned. And there is a condemnation, demon of condemnation. You're going to say, you demon of condemnation, in my family catch fire. You demon of, open your mouth and pray. You demon of condemnation, in my life catch fire. The demon that go and condemn you. You are already condemned at work. You are already condemned in the in the society. When they just see you, they say, ah, this is the thief. They, are, they have already condemned you. You say you catch fire in the huge spirit of condemnation against my life. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. Even self-condemnation. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. You spirit of condemnation in my family. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. You spirit of condemnation in my church. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. You spirit of condemnation even in this group. Catch fire in the name. Yes, Holy Ghost fire this is the job of the fire to 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 burn all the condemnation all the paper where they wrote condemnation on your name all those paper command them to burn command them to burn hallelujah fire in the name of jesus yes yes condemnation work with another spirit is the spirit of guilt it is the spirit of guilt. The spirit of guilt. When it comes upon somebody. Yeah. When people condemn you. Even if you didn't do it. When the people condemn you. There is this guilt that come on you. There is this guilt that come upon families. There is this guilt. Yes. The people. The people of uh, Ukraine. They didn't do anything. They just. Uh, you imagine. You didn't do anything. But they have condemned you and you are guilt and then the bomb start to fall upon your country. The bomb start to fall upon your house. You don't, you didn't do anything. Even if you did it, uh, there is what we call the blood of Jesus. Uh, there are some church, they, they go through this thing. The church didn't do anything. The pastor of the church didn't do anything. But already everybody in the society say, ah, you go to the church. Hey, the church of this. Oh, the pastor of this. The, the, already in the in the society, everybody condemned and everybody who go to the church are guilty. Yes. Oh, there are some places uh, just uh, because uh, you have a color. Then just because you are green or you are yellow, do, when you pass by, they say, oh, you are guilty. That is why you are condemning that demon. You demon of guilt in my life. You demon of guilt in my family. You demon of guilt over my brothers, over my sister, fighting the life of my brother and my sisters. Catch fire. Catch fire. In the name of Jesus, catch fire. In the name of Jesus, catch fire. Yes, let the fire of the Holy Ghost consume all the guilt against you. Yes, even the guilt that they send against you from when you were a baby and that is troubling your heart right now. Receive your liberty. By the blood, by the blood, through the blood of Jesus, nobody is guilty in my family. Through the blood blood of Jesus. Nobody is guilty in this group. Through the blood of Jesus. Nobody is guilty in a church. By the blood that speak better thing for us. Declare the blood of Jesus upon your life. Plead the blood of Jesus over every case where they condemn you guilt. Yes, yes, there are some people in prison where they condemn them guilt, but they didn't do anything. But it's because of the demon that go and enter in the judge, and the judge say they are guilty. That is why you say, by the blood of Jesus, nobody in my family is guilty. By the blood, yes, by the blood, the blood that wash away, that wash by Boshin, that about. We declare it by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Those demons work together. It is like a football team. I will send, I will send the, uh, the list up in the chat so that uh, we are going together. But uh, still follow up. This is the list of those. Those are the, those are the master strong demons that the enemy use against people. And when you use them as a team, they always work good and they do a good job. 
And after guilt, when a person is guilt, when the person is under the guilty, what comes? It's shame. After the, when the guilt has done its job, what comes? It is shame. When a person is feeling shame, when the person is under the condemnation and the shame, the person cannot even pray. Have you ever seen a person telling you that, yes, I am a Christian, but I don't feel like praying? No, 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 no. It's not that the person doesn't feel like praying. It is the person is under shame. When a person is under shame, the person cannot even go before God. Remember the story of Eve and Adam. They were children of God. We are talking about children of Abraham. They were children of God, but because of shame, they could not go in the presence of God to pray. That is the reason why you see a lot of people not coming to church anymore. That's the reason you see many people not praying anymore. Why? If you are sh feeling shame, you are ashamed to enter in the presence of God, will you come in his presence and say, Hallelujah, God, I love you? No, no, it will not work because you are feeling shame. But it is a demon. But it is not you because for that who prick a king that row. This is what the Bible is saying to me in the book of Romans. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Therefore, all the accusation and the guilt against you to bring shame upon your life, to bring shame upon your family, to bring shame upon uh, this group, uh, to bring shame upon a church. Uh, it is the work of the enemy. So command it to burn by fire. Open your mouth. Speak to the shame. You shame. You shame. Be conjured by the fire of the Holy Ghost. You shame be consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. You shame be consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. You shame be consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. You shame be consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. You shame, yes, shame against my life. All the shame against my life. You pray for yourself. You declare all the shame against my life. You pray for your family and you declare all the shame against my family. You pray for your brothers. You pray for your sisters. You pray for this group and you pray for this church and you declare all the shame against this church. We command it to burn in the name of Jesus. The enemy cannot bully us with shame. The enemy cannot bully us with with shame in the name of Jesus be destroyed by fire by fire in the name of Jesus now when all those things work together this is what happened when fear come what is fear fear is produced when the person said there is no hope for me that is when fear is produced fear is produced when a person said there is nobody to save me there is nobody to save me that is when fear happen when the Fear happen when, because when you are condemned, when you are ashamed, when you are guilty, you are daraba, odobede, etara, all those things, then you are left by yourself. And nobody will save you. Nobody in your family will support you. Nobody in the church will su sustain you. And that you fear. That is the demon of fear. Because you know that nobody will help me. Then you are in the darkness. You are in, yes. Yeah, I want to tell somebody, I have seen Christians in fear. Though Jesus Christ has saved us, but still the demons are able to bring up an illusion around them in fear. That is why you command fire. Open your mouth, say fire. Yes, fire. Holy Ghost. We are still in the period where we are praying by fire. We are reclaiming our deliverance by fire. Last upon they said today, by fire. All the fear against my family consume by fire. All the fear against my life consume by fire. All the fear in my life, in a church, in this group, we command the fear to burn. Fear that to tormenting anybody connected to this group, we consume by fire. We consume by fire. We consume by fire. We consume by fire. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are free minute. Yarobe Shindarabo Sokeramanda. We are attacking rejection. 
That's it. The, we are going through the list of those demons that play with people's life. It is the demon of rejection. The demon of rejection attack a person. Don't nobody reject you. You think that everybody rejects you. No, not see about that. It come on you and you think. The same way that demon come, come or came upon the, the daughter of Abraham and she was bound. The same way the demon of rejection come upon a person. And the person start to think that everybody have rejected me. That nobody loved me. Have you heard? Somebody saying to you that nobody loves me. My mom doesn't love me. My father doesn't love me. My brothers doesn't don't love me. My sisters don't love me. Nobody in this world loves me. The, the queen doesn't love me. The pope doesn't love me. The president Narabo Shoko. Open your mouth. Command that demon of fear to burn. Rejection. We are on rejection. Command rejection to burn. Command rejection to burn. Command yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, commander rejection to burn. Every rejection, even rejection and self-rejection. When the rejection it is so much in a church, people will come to speak about that church, saying, in that church, there is no love. Have you heard Christian saying about the church that in my church there is no love in my church? Why? Because uh, the demon of rejection has took place. That is why you have to pray. You are praying uh, over a church. Uh, there is no place for this demon of rejection. In the name of Jesus, uh, you are supreme Shabbat. in your family. Nobody will say that in this family nobody loves me. In this family nobody loves me. No, 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 no. That demon, you oppose it by fire your prashida yes the chain has to break the bandage of satan has to break by fire in the name of jesus by fire by fire by fire last point for today last point for today rebellion 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 is a demon when you see rebellion it is a demon. When you see a person, you are talking to the person, the, you can see that the person is rebelling. It is a demon. Yes, people can say that, oh, when a person is Christian, demon cannot enter. Yes, we, they can say that. But I am sure you have seen a rebellious Christian. I am sure you have seen them. So, how how about thing about? We don't have too much time. That's why you are praying. When all those demons have worked in a person's life, the person start to rebel. Even the person rebel against God. The person doesn't want to do the thing that the elder says. The person doesn't want to do the thing that the, the family says. The person says, because you don't love me, then I will not do anything you say to me to do. Because you never show me love. Therefore, I will never reply good to you. Don't you show love to the person because there is a demon of rejection. So, command the demon, yes, under those demons, there are a lot of demons who work with them. That's why the Bible said to you that the demon of rebellion is like a demon of witchcraft. Why? Because uh, under those, those demons are the chief. Under them, there are all the demons. That's why we command the fire of God to consume the chief. The chief demon of rebellion against your life, against your family, against your brothers and your sisters, against your children. The rebellion against your children in the, the as attacking the heart of your children. Command it to burn by fire. The rebellion even in the church. The rebellion even in the church, even in this group, even in a family that is provoked by people saying that nobody loves me. We command it to burn by fire. We break the chain by fire. We command fire to burn all those things. But in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sorry I've took the time because it was, this is a subject for a long time. But the Spirit wanted us to go through this today. And I want you, even when you stay at home, to go through everything. I know that we have we haven't prayed on the prayer request, but as we were praying, attacking those seven demons, we were attacking, we were going through all the requests. When you go through the prayer request and look at the prayer request with the spiritual eyes, you will see that every single of those prayer requests is at least provoked by one of those demons. When there is demon, the people are not free.
I bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to go to Pastor Dode for the announcement and the closing prayer. May the Lord bless you more and more. We will continue praying. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Coco for the for the world. We are so so blessed. We are so blessed. And uh, uh, let me say to you something. Tomorrow we will continue to pray. Tomorrow, even your request, we we'll continue to pray for your request tomorrow Sunday because we will bring all your requests on Sunday. We will pray for for that. Even I'm saying uh, at home, I will pray also for the your request, you know, because for the time, and uh, we want just to stop now. But I will pray for the, your request, and tomorrow Sunday, all the requests we will pray for that on Sunday. Come Sunday, Sunday service, because tomorrow Sunday service is a fasting. We we need to fast tomorrow. Your request. You, you stand today, we will pray for that tomorrow, Sunday, and we, because we, we come in with a fasting, prayer and fasting. All kind the of demons, seven, seven demons that pastor revealed us today, we will continue to pray for that tomorrow. Come tomorrow and to pray uh, a lot, because we have a lot, but we have not enough uh, time, but that's why we we uh, stopping here. But we have also an on Mon um, Monday, start Monday. We have a week of prayer. We will start Monday to Friday. Hallelujah! Monday to Friday next week for the prayer, and uh, after that. We have also planned, we have planned for the baptism at the church. It will be on Sunday 13. That's what we will maybe talk about uh, tomorrow because for the time. Hallelujah. Just uh, uh, think about the, the way we pray today, the way you, uh, you heard the word of God. That word gave you already freedom in the name of the Lord Jesus. But because... The seven demons who attack our life is in Pastor reveal us uh, today. God reveal us today that that seven demons who making problem in our society. We proclaim the word of God today. We receive the word of God. Amen. And I will pray for the fire to come down again yes. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. Lord God, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for a prayer meeting today. Thank you, my Lord. We have not enough time today, but you, you know. Oh, 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 we thank you. Oh, the Fire in the name of Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. May Thank the Lord you, Lord. bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord protect you, and the Lord give you again the, the word of freedom for you, hallelujah, to hallelujah, to stand firm before your enemies. I believe that that word will it bless you already in Jesus' Christ's name. Amen. See, tomorrow, tomorrow we we'll continue all your release of the prayer. We will pray that. I will pray that. Uh, again, that night I will pray, and tomorrow we will continue to pray for that. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye bye, everyone. 3 p.m. 3 p.m. to continue to pray. May God bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you.